to write the first lines of code for software that will change the world, to hire the team that will make your dream a reality. That's why we built a different cloud, one that's comprehensive without complexity, that gets you up and running in minutes and stays with you every step of the way. Because simpler tools lead to happier developers and happier developers get better results. Build with us, grow with us at DigitalOcean. Fancy. I love that video. <laughs> it is good. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Cloud Chats. It is February 17th, 2022. This is Season 2, Episode 2, titled View 3, Node.js Trademarks, and TI-84 Ray Tracing, which that in of itself <laughs> begs the question, and I guess we'll get to that later. Uh, but good morning, everyone. Hey, good morning. What, yeah, what a title. <clears throat> <laughs> we did. That was an interesting title. So it's, it's some interesting news. Stay tuned. <laughs> so moving into our hello world question of the day, what technology are you most interested in right now? Ooh. And while we're thinking, yes, hello. thank you, Durga. Say hello. Maybe tell us where you're watching from and uh, tell us what technology you're most interested in right now. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm curious. It's like a really open-ended question. <laughs> Mason, do you have what's 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 your go-to currently? Mm. Well, I'm not interested in it, but I found myself doing a lot more web development this year than I've already wanted to. I've probably done more web development this year than I've done in the last ten years of my career, um, because I've been constantly like updating the Pi Texas website as we get closer and closer to our conference. And I might actually have to borrow Matt later because I would like it for my <laughs> named anchors to not get stuck behind my fixed nav bar. And no matter what I do in bootstrap, <laughs> it does not want to do that. And then I'm sitting here and I'm like, this is why people hate front end because I'm over here arguing about pixels and with it, with it, with the machine that does not want to give me the answer that I seem to do so desperately need. And one would think, this would be an easy problem to solve and that a lot of other people would have had this problem. Apparently oh, I'm not. sure they have. It's just the internet. So finding those people is very difficult. <laughs> it shouldn't be. It's the internet. <laughs> well, so. if there's any lingering, uh, the old attitude that like front end is easier than back end, I hope. I hope we can put that to rest. Oh, oh I know. Yeah. I, I find front end stuff extremely challenging. Oh my god, no! I will take I will take back end code over having to do divs any day. Like as soon as we get three divs in, I'm lost <laughs> and we're never coming back. And uh, so yeah, I mean, it has been fun though. I will say, like I am, I. It's the first time in a while I feel like I am pushing myself and I am expanding outside of my comfort zone. I'm just crying a lot more. <laughs> which is what it is so what about y'all what are y'all interested in learning i don't know I, i'm with you there like i spent a lot of my kind of starting years in web dev doing front end stuff um and i've definitely seen the light and uh you know writing a service that returns some json is much simpler than having to make a pretty ui for it <laughs> yeah ah uh, i don't know i'm really stuck on like what technology i think i'm interested in right now I feel like I'm just very much stuck in the whole, I have stuff to do, so I just use the technologies I know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I have, uh, the last couple of uh, streams that I've done, I've been experimenting with a project called Open Policy Agent, which is a way of um, like, auditing requests that come in to either your Kubernetes cluster or some other infrastructure. And I have not been able to get it to work using their getting started tutorial. I think I am close, um, but just cause I'm at that point where I'm like, I'm, I'm really close. That's like what I'm interested in right now, but I would like to write a blog post about it or maybe um, make some suggestions on their, uh, their tutorial. Uh, cause it, probably shouldn't take like four four hours to get the proof of concept up and running <laughs> <laughs> that's the best i think that's the best way to go and like contribute to docs is go through the process and then immediately go and write down kind of what you did um 
it's a good yeah. way to keep docs up to date. Absolutely. All right. We've got some folks saying, hey, hi, Joe. Welcome. And we've got JF from California. <laughs> Andrew says, <laughs> LOL, what Matt said. <laughs> And Toon Army Captain answering our question, uh, what technology are you interested in? I'm interested in Bash. It's so useful. And using option in tandem with Bash simplifies so much. What I will... is option? <laughs> so I'm with you there on the whole Bash thing, actually. I've been writing a huge amount of Bash recently. Mm. And it's, oh, it's... We're coming full circle. It, it's really satisfying. Bash? Uh, oh, yeah. I like Bash. <laughs> oh, you, it says using Python in tandem, not options. Okay. So. Got it. <laughs> cool. Yeah. No, I said the only issue I have with Bash is there's like it's really hard to tell what's truly cross compatible. Like you can write a pure a proper shell script and then you use only POSIX compliant stuff and that works. But once you go into Bash land, you're like, oh well this works in my shell, but is it gonna work in someone else's shell? Oh yeah. And then you get the is it BSD or GNU version? Yes. Which has caught which us a few times because all of our devs work in BSD, but our mm. deployment pipelines mm. are GNU, and writing a script that works for both is really painful. We have a visitor. Hi, Loki. Oh. Hey, Loki. He, de <laughs> he decided that the door does not the door does not stop me. So. <laughs> anyway, yeah, Bash is, you know, yeah. I, I have a, I, yeah, I'm just, I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I feel like you have feelings about Bash. <laughs> okay. Well, hello to Kithoma and hello to Jishnu. Love having y'all here. This is an earlier comment. Durga saying, I want to be a DE, I think maybe a DA, a developer advocate. Or a data Rel engineer. Developer or evangelist. Dated. Ooh, developer evangelist. Excellent. Turns out acronyms are a really bad idea. <laughs> Turns out we have multiple <laughs> words that describe the exact job that we do. And that's always yes, fun. Yes, that is true. Um, um, yeah. I also figured out the Kahoot thing. It was the top option. I just had to scroll up. Oh, ooh. <laughs> so so, so wait, if you're what? watching this video later, whenever Kim's talking and you see me do this, that's because, I'm, <laughs> that's because my mind was blown because it's just sitting right there and I didn't see it. So oh, okay. we're, we're, glad, we're glad we found that setting though. Kahoot changed their um their user interface this morning, which is a great thing to do three minutes before you go all, before you go live. Um, <laughs> I feel like so, that's probably oh, on us for you know not not thinking about that before. It, it worked Monday because I tested it on Monday. It was the old thing whenever I wrote the questions <laughs> on Monday. So I'm saying, but between now and Monday, they've changed it. I'm upset, you know. Please, Kahoot, if you're listening, make sure you sync up with us. We are obviously the most important thing. <laughs> using <laughs> a system um oh john says hello one of our fellow sharks from do hey john hey john uh, okay. oh here you go de was data engineer told you oh okay so i thought uh, i'd seen that okay okay cool okay and now we're going to move on to our news section this is the lovely part of the section where we talk about news we have multiple parts here. We usually talk about some current releases, and then we have our main thread news, which we also maybe we'll re rephrase that to spicy news. Um, oh, I, I, I called it main thread to try and be like somewhat computery, but <laughs> yeah, I mean it makes sense. So are we going to call the releases preprocessor directives? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, so okay. I think, I think this week when there's not going to be much cohesion here. Um, I think we'll be talking about a lot of this stuff. Yeah, it looks a little bit all over the place, but here we go. Facebook Pay is an easier, secure way to pay in more places than ever. Yeah, because... Facebook has released Facebook Pay. There you go. It's a release. We're not going to talk about it more on that. <laughs> Works for me. Like, like, I don't already have enough things that let me pay. Next yeah. one. <laughs> um, it's, a it's a Venmo kind of thing. It's Venmo, yeah. Uh, ray tracing on the TI-84. Okay, can we talk about that? Yeah, like... so this, this is like, I put it in releases because it's technically a release, um, but we should we should talk about it a bit more. Uh, someone has implemented full proper like full ray tracing on a TI eighty four. Um, All right, hold on. Let's define some terms. So a TI eighty four is a graphing calculator. Yes, correct? it's a graph yeah. calculator. <laughs> and and it's, not even, it's, it's not even a high end one. Oh, <laughs> like, okay. It, I feel the, like that's what I had in high school, and I'm yes. much older than the two of you. Um, and then what is ray tracing? <laughs> so ray tracing is kind of 
uh, a way of handling light in uh, computer rendering. Ah. So, as the name implies, you you trace a ray of light, so you can do accurate reflections and stuff. Nice. That was and a really right. terrible explanation. I work in web, not <laughs> game rendering. Yes, the the fact, but I, I think the the fact that it's so the TI eighty four has a like six pixel screen. Um, <laughs> so yes, the fact that they accurate. were able able to do ray tracing on that is yeah kind of blowing my mind a little bit. I don't know. I feel like at this point the TI eighty four just does everything. It seems to be like an ongoing programming game just to make the TI-84 do something. Yes, uh, I love it. Sure. <laughs> well, so many people that are older than me got their programming start on programming TI-84s, doing basic and TI-84s. Like, I've met mm-hmm. a lot of people who have done that. And now they even have the TI-84 Python edition, which comes with a very minimal but functional Python standard library. And you have a REPL in your calculator. Um, yeah. which I still want one. I have no use for one, but I want it. <laughs> coding coding like this. <laughs> yeah. Um I don't know. It's it's really weird. Um I don't know. I feel like when you think of ray tracing, to me, I think of like top end uh NVIDIA graphics cards. That's like Un- Unreal Engine. Like yeah, I don't well, that's, think, that's I've always seen ray tracing yeah. for the consumer. I don't think SAT test. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> so that one's fun. Um, we're gonna have to look more into that. Um, for oh, sure. Tune Army Captain says, uh, you can do amazing things with a Casio 2, like in addition to TI 84. <laughs> now they have Python. Um, <laughs> technically, this means I've programmed a language with go tos. Oh, I've done there, <laughs> been there, done that. I've done that. I, my, what I had to take when I took uh, assembly language in, co- in college, it was a whole class on assembly. Um, I don't know why I needed a semester of assembly, but we got it. Um, <laughs> and you're right. It's nothing but go-tos. And it makes sure. And literally, our professor was like, write this in Excel. It works a lot better if you write your program in Excel and then try to run it. So you can, like, somehow make – we had some sort of thing that made the – where you could see where the go-to went because he had, like, an Excel macro. And I was like, this is bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's very creative <laughs> uh he was a creative person anyway yeah. that's enough ray tracing for today um right. view three is now our default for view yeah so view three has been around for a while now um if you're like a view fan you've probably heard of it seen it maybe even used it um and as of last monday yeah last monday february 7th uh view three is now the main the default version for Vue. So if you install Vue from NPM, you'll now get Vue 3 by default. Um, and it's not just Vue, all the related Vue packages like the Vue CLI um, and the Vue Loader for Webpack and such um, have also all been updated to have Vue 3 as the default version. Um, so it's just a heads up. If you're installing Vue mm. uh, and you need Vue 2, you now need to specify app 2. Um, and similarly, all the Vue docs online and everything um, are now written for Vue 3 by default. Um, but if you add v2 dot to the start of any docs link, it will take you to the v2 version still. Nice. Is this kind of like a long time coming? Yes, v3 has been in the work for okay. two, three years now. Oh, um, that's not that's that, I mean that's a long time in JavaScript land. But I mean, like we literally had Python two for ten years, <laughs> Python three for ten years before we finally got to Python. I think Python three was like fifteen years old before we actually made the move to it. Like yeah, we're, we're talking about a framework here versus a language, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, but still. Uh, yeah, uh, I say, but, and, and with it being like a really popular framework as well, uh, they've written an excellent guide on like upgrading if you want to go through that process. So that's nice. That's I recommend great. taking a look. Cool. Cool, cool. Um, are we doing the next one, Kim? Yeah, yes. Kim has a demo for us, <laughs> which means I can play. I have it. Where's it at? Boom. <laughs> I've moved well, I've moved them all around. We have our lightning tutorial that we're gonna do in releases, which doesn't make sense, but don't ask about it. Um <laughs> I think we're good though. Uh Kim, go ahead. Yeah, so yesterday uh DigitalOcean and Glitched announced an integration uh where you can deploy glitch apps to DigitalOcean uh via our app platform. 
Um, and so if you don't know what Glitch is, it's this uh, company where you can find uh, web apps and coding projects that people have already completed. You can mess around with them, you can fork them, and then you can like use the code yourself. Uh, and it's a really fun tool. And so I'm going to remix a Glitch app and deploy it to DigitalOcean. We'll see, uh, we'll see what happens. This is a live demo. Not we should one probably of my say prayer to the live demo gods at this point. <laughs> So if you go to uh, glitch.com, they have these really cool playlists where they uh, group together uh, glitch apps that have a similar theme. So like they have a Wordle playlist if you want to mess around with Wordle style apps. Uh, there's also this deploy to DigitalOcean playlist. So uh, this one sort of is set up to deploy to DigitalOcean really quickly. I'm going to go to this Hello DigitalOcean uh, app. It's a very simple app. Eh, I wouldn't say that. It's uh, it doesn't have uh, like a database or I, even a backend. I don't think it's just a React app. So uh, not simple, but uh, for demonstration purposes, it's relatively straightforward. So uh, Glitch is like preparing this uh, pane on the side that's going to show me what my app looks like. Um, so we'll wait for that. And while that's happening, oh beautiful. Okay, so. So this is the app. Uh, this is on my Glitch account now, and uh, this just uh, bounces when you go over it. So I want to change this high DO to high cloud chats. I'm guessing it's in the index.html. Glitch gives you this in-browser text editor. Um, OK, so the title will say hi. Ooh, my, my caps lock is on <laughs> chats. And then. Oh, it must be somewhere else where the high DO is. So let's poke around in the source, maybe. Uh oh, maybe I'm out of my depth now with. <laughs> I'm guessing it's probably in index.jsx, maybe. All right. Nope. Uh, okay. App.jsx. App.jsx. Uh, nope, maybe in pages. <laughs> I feel like we're yeah. we're, we're really uh, you know we, we just <laughs> talk great. about how we all hate front end. And, you know, <laughs> Not you really a tell. great look. Okay, um, here we go. Idea right at the top there. There we go. So we're changing this to high cloud chats. Ah, so we see it changed. So um, glitch is neat because you basically have this uh, development environment in your browser, and you can make changes to an existing code base without having any developer tools on your computer. So it's just a really neat experience in that way. But now I'm going to show you how to deploy this to DigitalOcean. So I'm going to the .env file. Um, in order to connect my account, my DigitalOcean account with Glitch, I have to have a DigitalOcean access token. So I'm going to go to my DigitalOcean account. I'm going to the API tab. And I'm going to generate a new token. And we'll call this one uh, Glitch. I'm going to grab that, and then I'm going to paste it in the uh, value. And you can see up in the left-hand corner, now it says set up at platform. So I'm going to do that. And we, we've got a console here with logs, kind of what's going on. Oh, wonderful. We've got this deployed to DigitalOcean. Let's just look in our app platform view. OK, so uh, Glitch is one of those services that gives you a randomly generated name. So Inquisitive Electric Scaffold is the name of that app. All right, and I'm just going to click Deploy to DigitalOcean. And that might take a couple minutes. Um, oh, actually, I, I hit it twice, I think. Um, but while that's deploying, let's make another change to the application, and then we can redeploy that change. So. Uh, easiest one for me to show is uh, like changing a color. So if we go to styles.css. Let's change the background color. Okay, that's the button. Mm, I don't know. Let's just change this to gray. <laughs> see if we see it. Oh, I, I have to the hash and start. Hash. Show me something. Change. I don't know. Where does color right. primary get used? <laughs> I don't I'll change know. Uh, color BG at the top. That might be the easiest to. Okay, I'll try gray. Hey, okay. So 
Now I have, uh, this is my development environment. Let's see, it looks like we're still building the production uh, version of the app. Um, but the nice thing, let's, oh, I don't have an app. I don't have an app in production yet, but um, eventually there'll be a drop down menu on Glitch where you can see development and production and all that. So we'll give it maybe, let's actually, let's go on to the next set of news and then we'll come back to this. Uh, I bet it'll be ready to go after that. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So what's next in the news? We're jumping into main thread stuff now, by the looks of it. Uh, and we've got- thread. <laughs> Node.js trademarks transferred to OpenJS Foundation. Uh, so this is for those that are in like the Node ecosystem and following kind of like almost meta Node stuff for a while now. Um, you may be aware that OpenJS, which kind of looks after Node, didn't actually own any of the trademarks to Node. Um, they're owned by a company called Joyent, um, who kind of have had them for a long time and have supported Node. Um, and you know, have been pretty open about it you know that they're, they're not causing issues um but as of february 14th valentine's day which is pretty perfect um joyent agreed to transfer all the trademarks over to openjs foundation um so pretty cool that's nice it makes, it makes sense it makes sense to you know protect protect all this protect all this stuff yeah as i think yeah. it says at the top here that kind of prior to this the openjs foundation have been it had a free license to use those trademarks from Joyent. Um, so, you know, it wasn't a problem previously, but it's it's nice to see that those kind of have been officially handed over um, to the foundation. Yeah, that is that is always a good thing to see, is to see them uh, do that. Like, I, I kind of watched, not really trademarks, but like certain projects within like the Python ecosystem. Like whenever, like there's some projects that are like basically too relied on to, you know, go away and whenever the whenever the maintainer was like i don't want to do this anymore they got transferred into the psf which i think mm -hmm. is a great thing for any programming language to have like a governing body that can you know be willing to accept and maintain these like vital parts of the ecosystem yeah yeah <laughs> as i think yeah openjs foundation is is the javascript version of that which is in itself i think part of the linux foundation which oh. has a huge number of different foundations underneath it so it's really nice to see all those existing. That is good. Oh, yeah, it is a Linux Foundation project right here at the top. <laughs> there you go. Should we jump into the next one? Yeah, our next one is solid state drive prices could spike after Western Digital loses six and a half billion gigabytes of NAND chips. Great. I'm looking just, forward yeah, to that. Just, just a casual 6.5 billion gigabytes. <laughs> if you if you watched podcasts <laughs> last week, you remember that NAND is one of the universal gates. So <laughs> that's why it's not only do they lose their NAND chips, they've also lost their ability to make any other. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> <laughs> where are you yeah. going with this? <laughs> well, I I was like I was so happy to see us like you know this was in our our like questions last week and it got pulled it's in the news like we don't get that kind of overlap often hmm. <laughs> and remember if they have nan chips they can make any chip so you know if they were a little bit short on some ores a couple <laughs> nans would have done it but now they can't even do that <sighs> yeah hard I, hardware supply and chains stuff is rough right now yeah. <laughs> at this point it's like just the, i think the headline should be stuff's more expensive <laughs> yeah so, we so, know we're, we're living in it this is going to impact all flash storage right so ssds but is it going to impact ram or no it shouldn't right i don't does wd make ram i don't think i've ever bought so. wd ram because yeah. that looks like what is that that look those on that picture that looks like an nvme ssd yeah so yeah. this is specifically they were, it's definitely just just western digital right yeah i don't think yeah. they, they they don't do they indirectly supply anyone else or are they purely building their own stuff I don't know. I think they just build their own stuff, to be honest. I've never seen their stuff anywhere else, but that doesn't mean they couldn't, you know, yeah. OEMs resell. But well, so either way, though, it will cause the whole industry to raise their prices a bit, which would be um, yeah, fun. Yeah. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> yeah. uh, next one, .NET is 20 years old. Happy birthday, .NET. Yeah. I say, I, have any of us used oh. .NET before? Nope. And cool. Our, lots to talk about on this one, man. <laughs> our our uh, 
our VP of product and programs at DigitalOcean and Marketing is a ex Microsoft employee and big .NET fan. So I know he was waving a tiny little flag that day. <laughs> but um, no, okay. So I mean, I've never written .NET web applications. I did write VB VB scripts whenever I was in college. Again, this goes back to the days of Perl, like writing just like random Visual Basic applications in Windows and doing kind of cool stuff with it um i haven't written any of that probably since 2012 mm -hmm. so it's been about a decade but it's i'm pretty sure they're talking about just the .NET framework but yeah it's come a long way but good, good happy happy 20 years you know that's a that's a big milestone yeah, it, it is. It, it's a really long time in tech i think you know yeah for sure um our next one is argo cd deals with its first zero day cve yeah, so last week we looked at the article that the uh, security firm that found the vulnerability published, and this is Argo CD's response. So uh, they made a uh, they made like a patch update um, fixing the issue. Um, but uh, uh, I did I did enjoy this vulnerability limitation. So uh, the attacker would have already had to have had access to deploy applications from Argo CD uh, in order to. Uh, make use of those malicious Helm charts. Um, so I um, think it makes it a lot harder, but definitely uh, want to think about who has access to what in your CI CD pipelines, uh, I think is the lesson here. So um, yeah, good job to the security research team. Good job to Argo for fixing it. And, uh, you know, always update your versions, especially when a CVE drops. <laughs> this should be in the releases section. This is a release. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, <laughs> next time, I'll get it right next time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One way or the other, it's in the news. Oh, it's in the news, yeah. Okay. I, know, I think uh, we'll call this more than news because it talks about, you know, actually kind of how they've dealt with it. And it's good. To, I, I like the fact that it was, they, they kind of really explicitly clarified who could exploit this. Um, yeah. That's nice to see. Nice. And our next one comes out of blockchain blockchain and the new custom compute group i i saw this i haven't had time to read this yet so i read it <laughs> okay uh so basically intel is saying like hey we we understand that blockchain is a technology that uses a lot of energy and we've had a lot of requests from big customers to uh, make products that use that are less energy intensive um and so it sounds like they are they have launched a blockchain accelerator. They're going to be building new processors specifically for blockchain. And I thought this was interesting. Uh, they have uh, Argo blockchain, which I don't know, uh, Block, formerly known as Square, I do know them, and Grid Infrastructure <laughs> are among our first customers for this upcoming product. Um, hmm. So, Can we just take a moment to remind ourselves what Block is? <laughs> Can we go to the site again? Do we have yes. it? Just yes, we can. <laughs> uh, then we, how do we get to the right page? I can't remember. It's in the nav, isn't it? Uh, the nav. Okay. <laughs> uh, investors, I think was the page. Is it? Or is it governance? Let's see. We'll try governance. Uh, governance leadership. <laughs> governance leadership. Yes. Um... Is there? Is the word? Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> this is block. <laughs> Formerly known as Square. <laughs> We've gone three dimensional. That, that was just, worth it. it. It just hurts. It my was one hundred percent worth it. I'm glad that you, I, that just hurts. That hurts my soul. Like, <laughs> like that. That like that. Literally, that's what the first iteration of Metaverse is going to look like. Everybody in Minecraft, and that's what their face is going to be like. And it's going to be terrifying. <laughs> oh, I'm so ready for it. I I am not, but it's good to hear that Intel's doing. You know, trying to make more efficient blockchains. You know. Yeah, and I mean that's a big company responding to that uh, that yeah. specific technology. So yeah, interesting. I, was, I I don't know. I feel like 
for all the controversial sides of blockchain, you know, the fact that Intel specifically putting kind of money and investment into making it more energy efficient, I think is yeah. really, it's, it's a good direction to be going in. And that's usually what happens. It's usually like it takes time for other companies to catch up and things get better, you know, mm -hmm. and like and I, I imagine that we will continue to see more and more improvements around all sorts of different hardware stuff, um, which is exciting for sure. Yeah. And our last news item is the Factorio mindset. So this is actually kind of a more of an article than a piece of news, um, but it, it turned up at the top of Hacker News earlier this week. Um, and team I'm on at work, we all read it and we all kind of, I don't know, I feel like we all resonated with it. Um, so we can talk about it quickly, but I'll say if you want to go read the whole thing, uh, the URL is thediff.co forward slash p forward slash the dash factorio dash mindset. I'm going to drop that into chat because there's no chat way on well. earth I'm going to get that, <laughs> though. Well, you know, but there might be people that, you know, aren't in chat. So we'll read okay, it out to them. Fair enough. Um, oh, you're right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Is this the factorio that yes. this article is referring to? Okay. Yes. So, so factorio is a, a wonderful game. Um, that's kind of very open-ended. Uh, you build civilization, kind of? Um, so you kind of like mine for resources, and then you build machines to build mm -hmm. things, and those machines can build machines. And it, It's your classic kind of factory game um, that can go on forever, and you can make it as efficient as you want. Um, and that's kind of that's what the article gets at, really, is you start out, so they, they the whole idea is it's an analogy to uh, from you know the game Factorio to writing code. Um, and you you know you start out kind of really quite scrappy. You know just build the bare minimum to do what you need to do, ah. uh, and then iteratively you just make it cleaner, make it more efficient, uh, make it more repeatable. Uh, kind of you know the whole concept of refactoring code, um, and it just nice. the article presents it in a really kind of nice abstract way with a really good analogy to factorio oh that's great it's like that idiom rome wasn't built in a day like mm -hmm. you don't go right from zero to advanced civilization like yeah. there are steps in between and the process of writing code can be the same way yeah as i think it also it also you know <laughs> if you don't play factorio and you're an engineer i genuinely recommend playing factorio um it actually encourages this mindset in like a, you don't realize it, but it just does. That's cool. I've never played it. I'll have to check it out. Have you ever played Factorio, Mason? No, I've already lost 180 hours of my life to Stardew Valley, which is not <laughs> exactly Factorio, but it is about making and like, like I'm literally, I'm literally in the min maxing stage of it mm -hmm. um, where I'm trying to, and I have enough. I have one video game that's already eaten a lot of my life. <laughs> um, so I don't need another one, but I will read it. it. It sounds exactly like the kind of thing that I would love to play. So I will mm -hmm. look into it. Um, but no, like I'm currently trying to get perfect on Stardew Valley, um, which is actually very hard. And like I said, 180 hours, that's year six for those of you that play that game. <laughs> um, it's a long time. Yeah, so it's yeah. I say well, Factorio is one of those games that will um, suck up as much time as you give it. Cool. Yep. Well, thanks for sharing that article. That is oh, our nice. last news item. Kim, are we going to go check the the deployment? My app is live. Hello. <laughs> so this is now deployed on DigitalOcean, and if I go back to Glitch. And I click deploy to DigitalOcean. We'll probably this is the terrible color combination, but uh, hopefully, we'll see the gray background uh, uh, get pushed up so to go. our it's production. So instantaneously trigger to build. Yes, yeah. the uh, The button deploy to DigitalOcean is very effective. So um, we'll come back to this. Let's go on. <laughs> there you go. That's really cool to see that. That's so so simple to use. Um, it's so simple to use, and I think it's a really powerful way of either learning code for the first time at all, um, because instead of doing everything from scratch, you're making changes and you're getting to explore the structure of a project and the actual like syntax of a language. Um, so if you're watching and you want to experiment with code, I think glitch is a great, is a great learning tool. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so I and think like, 
yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, like how we we've mentioned before, like we talked about code spaces when it came out and how it makes development even more accessible. I think this takes even one step further. You know, you've got you've got your IDE and you've got live preview mm -hmm. alongside that, all in a browser, mm -hmm. and then you've even got a direct integration to then deploy it to production again from your browser. Oh yeah, it's so cool. And actually, if we go back to this, let's see if I can find it. Okay, uh, so now there's this drop down saying like, this is what's in production on DigitalOcean, and this is oh, how cool. you've changed your development environment. So this is a really cool feature. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, isn't that cool? <laughs> okay, so. Glitch, if you're listening, one step further would be to make that drop down show a diff of your code as well. Ooh, Ooh that would be cool. <laughs> that would be nice. Would be nice. Oh, it looks oh. like mate. Looks like if I refresh. Ah, <laughs> so Woo. there you go. Yeah, that's all it takes. I love it. Love it. And now it's time for the part of the show that everybody loves the most. It's game <laughs> time. So we are playing another game of not true or false. We've called this one bits and bytes. If anyone else can come up with a better name, please let us know because it was hard. Um, this is our this is our weekly game where you have the opportunity to win some Sammy swag, some stickers, or if you're a Toon Army captain, more pens, until eventually you just win enough and you get to get out, be on the show. Because I said that as a joke once and he's holding me to it. So once he wins 10, he gets to be a guest. I think he's at six. All Can right. you do it in season two? We'll see. But I'm down if, you for go that. To, if you go to Kahoot.it and you go to enter in the game pen 564 you will be able to play with us, and the winner gets stuff. Depends on we have a list of stuff. We have a list of most, stuff. It's mostly stickers. <laughs> um, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Uh, and while we wait on everybody to join, Kim, word of the week. Excellent. Hold on, I gotta get my um, my nickname on Kahoot. All right. Ooh, I got a good one. <laughs> I am Diplomatic Finch. <laughs> <laughs> that works. It's that a good work. one. <laughs> That works really well. Uh, also, I did fix it. I did fix it last time, so it should appear. <laughs> it was a process, but we got it. So you, we should. You, if you're worried about stream delay, you don't really won't have to worry about it. So, uh, yeah, five six four two eight nine zero at kahoot.it. You can play it from your phone. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So the uh, I guess it's the words of the week is memory leak, um, and from the tech terms glossary. It says a memory leak is like a virtual oil leak in your computer. It slowly drains the available memory, reducing the amount of free memory in the system or reducing the amount of free memory the system can use. Most memory leaks are caused by a program that unintentionally uses up increasing amounts of memory while it is running. This is typically a gradual process that gets worse as the program remains open. If the leak is bad enough, it can cause the program to crash or even make the whole computer freeze. So I'm going to, I, I first had like professional experience with memory leaks when I would go on call and uh, occasionally I'd get like a, something's out of memory or containers out of memory or something or like a node fell over because all the memory was used. And Matt, if you can take that, uh, this is what a memory leak looks like. Uh, that was a thing that I learned, like just this, it goes up and up and up. Uh, in terms of uh, memory usage of a process or application. So Mason, Matt, tell me about your your experience with memory leaks. <laughs> They're awful. I've, I've been victimized <laughs> by them before. I've been a victim <laughs> to them. <laughs> so memory leaks are, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if you said it, but memory leaks are diff They're difficult to do in certain languages. Like hmm. Python doesn't really leak memory that badly, but if you're mm -hmm. doing stuff where you're managing your own memory, it's unbelievably easy. So like my, my undergraduate curriculum was all in C plus plus. So I had mm -hmm. to manually allocate memory all the time. So I'm, my data structures professor loved testing for memory leaks by giving us uh nine, 900,000 entry point data sets to run our hmm. code on. He would give us like this automated code and like this text file of like a gig of text and he's like, if there's a memory leak, we're going to find it. And he was right. <laughs> we always did. Um, literally, literally, that's the equivalent of like just putting an air compressor to a hose and being like, where's the leak? Boom. Oh, there it was. <laughs> <laughs> Pew. Yeah. So memory leaks like, are fun. 
the one of the things that really gets me in memory leaks is they're oftentimes really, really hard to track down. Mm. Yes. I I have a really fun long story about like a weird memory leak that I uh I don't know. I I uh, maybe that'll be what's on my mind. Nice. <laughs> so, so whilst we've been talking about this, my mind has been pondering your initial analogy, which was you know the oil leak. And actually, oh, yes. I was like, I, initially I went, that doesn't, it kind of works, kind of doesn't, but actually no, it really does. You know, a memory leak even has the environmental impact. It's <laughs> burning true. more electricity. <laughs> yeah, it's using more compute resources. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and it sounds like we all, no one has good feelings about memory leaks. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. All right, Mason, are we ready for the Kahoot? I'm trying to see if anyone else is going to join, but if they don't want to, oh, what happened? You unshared it. I unshared it. <laughs> Boing. <laughs> um, last chance to go ahead and join. I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Only eight people, so it's a we really good started. chance that you're going to Pe win. People can still join afterwards. It's fine. Yes, oh, but yeah. remember, our comp these competitions are stiff, so hopefully you'll make it. <laughs> okay, this week's theme is oceans, because again, oh we're digital ocean. So here's some more ocean animal quiz for you. <laughs> and here we go. The first question is, what are the stinging cells of a jellyfish called? Are they coloblasts? Syndocytes, <laughs> nematocytes, cyanocytes. Okay, note to self, only write things you can say. Yeah, there are some weeks where I feel like I might have a good attempt at this, and there are other weeks where I just know it's not going to go well. And it looks like everybody guessed and only one person got it correct. They are the one word that I can't say. I'm going to say syndocytes. Um, it's C-N-I-D-O-C-Y-T-E-S. I've never seen C-N before, so that's new. Uh, it's silence. It can't be a silent sea. Oh, interesting. Samantha says nematocysts. Nematocysts. Interesting. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's. I was. I. You'll. You'll have to take it up with Google on that one. Okay. As you can tell, Mason's written a quiz on a subject he's not an expert in. I. <laughs> You, if you okay, for <laughs> what is the fastest known marine animal? Is it the narwhal, the tiger Ooh. shark, the sailfish, or the sea crate? Also, I have never been an expert on almost ninety percent of these things that we have done <laughs> questions on, and I've and I usually have I, there's a I usually have like a little list that says like what the answers are, but I didn't think I'd need it except for that one question. So it is the sailfish. The sailfish has been known to get up to upwards of sixty five miles an hour. Dang. In the water. In so hindsight, that makes sense. The name kind of gives it away. It is, yeah. Very fast fish. Very big fish. So, looks like Classy Lark, Diplomat Finch, and Fast Iguana moved up, uh, but still, still anybody's game. What shark can live in both salt water and fresh water? Ooh, that's is it, interesting. Is it the great white shark, the nurse shark, the tiger shark, or the bull shark? Which shark can live in both salt and fresh water? Is it the great white shark, the nurse shark, the tiger shark, or the bull shark? And most people got this one correct. It is, in fact, the bull shark. The bull sharks can travel upstream and adapt from salt water to fresh water. So mm -hmm. if you're swimming in a river near an ocean and it's fresh water, you still have to worry about bull sharks. There was a river, <laughs> there was a river monster episode of that when I was a kid. Loved it. Oh, important update in chat, Mason. <laughs> there were two uh, right answers. <laughs> okay, fine. Well, <laughs> that's not how this works. So I, I can't I can't say half the words in that sentence. Like <laughs> Cinderians contain specialized cells known as syndocytes, stinging cells containing organelles called nematocyte sink stingers. Okay, fine. Samantha, we will send you a sticker pack. You work with us. <laughs> <laughs> Samantha's okay. one of the backstage people who makes this show possible. Probably should run the quiz past them first. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fine. Like, if you want swag that bag. Um... Wow, Fast Iguana is really pulling ahead. Yes. Yeah, they're living up to their Army Captain says nurse sharks can also sometimes come up freshwater, but I think the bull shark is the one that's, like, definitely known for it. Um, like, being living in their long term. Uh, what color is a lobster? 
Okay. Are they like, brown? <laughs> okay, this is what happens when you when you, when you randomize. Is it brown, red, blue, or all of the above? It's all of the above. They can be brown, they can be red, they can be violet sky. <laughs> <laughs> boo, Mason, boo. Okay, that's, yes. <laughs> okay. Oh, there we go. There we go. Got some movement. Classy Lark up to 1888. Joyful Urchin didn't... Well, I don't know. Didn't move up. I think they stayed. Snowy Goose and the Diplomat Fitch. Okay, I guess Matt, I should say probably the, say the thing, yeah. Say the, uh, I was about to say, say the thing, Matt. <laughs> you may see that people's scores are different. You may be wondering how that happened. Well, who isn't just about getting it right? It's about getting it right fast. Uh, so the faster you press the correct button, the more points you get. It's that yeah. simple. Which is why we switched to multiple choice, so you have a less probability of just spamming the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> and because I got really tired of writing true or false questions. <laughs> and as you can see from the scrolling at the bottom, you can join at any time. Which ocean has the most coral reefs? I always love this gif. Coral reefs are so fun. So we've got Which... Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, Arctic Ocean, or the Atlantic? Ooh. It is the Pacific Ocean nice. that has the most coral reefs, which I guess you would kind of think makes sense. It is the biggest. So, okay, just... it is okay. Just because I can't spell Arctic doesn't mean <laughs> it's fine. I said it correctly. Ar Arctic. <laughs> wow, it's tough Everyone out here. <laughs> whenever to remember to okay, yeah. Whenever you win to Army to Army Captain, you get to do all the prep work too. Like it's not just show up and have fun. You get to come and sit with me and make these quizzes. Classy lark. Yeah. If Toon Army Captain gets to ten, they can come on the show and they can write a quiz. Yes, and, <laughs> well, they, can, and they can figure out how to use Kahoot. It's, sometimes it's a little cranky. Deal. Oh, there we go. There we go. Deal. <laughs> Uh, Diplomat Finch, Fast Iguana, Dazzle, Dolphin, Joyful Urchin. I love that that Kim is still in second. I so, know. I'm, I'm going to slow down here. <laughs> jellyfish are what percent water? Are they 95% water, 93% water, 90% water, or 99% water? Does like the hollow around their body count? I think it's literally just their body mat. I don't know. I don't know what the hollow is. I don't know how that's classified. I don't know if like I don't know enough about jellyfish, but the answer is ninety five percent. Well, it's like a you know like a box jellyfish. It is a box with a massive hollow inside it. Is that does that count as jellyfish inside or? I think it's maybe just the member, but I mean they remember they don't even have brains, so like True. they're just mostly water. Like impressive bits of water. Yeah, fast iguana, classy lark, joyful urchin, and joyful in echidna. We looked that up last time because we never know what an echidna is, right? Yeah, we uh, definitely looked up before. Yeah. Next question: The wandering albatross is the world's biggest seabird. How wide is its wingspan? Is it six meters, twenty feet, one and a half meters, five feet, three point four meters, eleven feet, or seven point six meters, twenty five feet? And I don't know if that's an albatross in the GIF. But it did come up, so maybe. 3.4 meters or 11 feet. It's a big bird. That is big. Dang, that's that really, is... it's really big. It's a big bird. So <laughs> I wouldn't fancy my chances against one. No, Wait, did, me either. Did, did nobody move? No one moved. <laughs> Not, nothing wow. happened. Ooh. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> How much can the largest species of sea turtle, the leatherback sea turtle, weigh? <laughs> oh, it's a good gift. That's so it's good. It's a good gift. Sea can they weigh carrying a sea turtle? <laughs> yes. Can they weigh nine kilograms, twenty pounds, ninety kilograms, two hundred pounds, nine hundred kilograms, two thousand pounds, or nine thousand kilograms, twenty thousand pounds? <laughs> The answer is 900 kilograms. The leatherback sea turtle can Good weigh up golly. to 2,000 Oof. pounds. That's a very, that's like what elephants weigh. <laughs> the animals in the ocean are, because there's just so much space, and I guess it's just easier to, they, they are because so. Because they float. Yeah. They float. Yes. <laughs> they can weigh so much. Oh, Dazzle Dolphin. But again, the top movers aren't moving. This is worrisome because they're going to catch up. Dazzle Dolphin might come and steal it from you at the last you second. Top movers aren't moving. 
The top people on the leaderboard aren't moving. Okay, Matt, can we? Good grief. Everyone's a critic today. <laughs> Which marine mammals have the thickest coat of fur? Is it sea otters, polar bears, fur seals, or sea lions? Hmm. Which marine animals have the thickest coat of fur? Sea otters, polar bears, fur seals, or sea lions? The answer is actually sea otters, surprisingly enough. They have the thickest fur. So what's a fur seal then? Yeah, I have no idea. Seal? I have no idea, but I bet they're cute. I bet oh, I'm cute. sure. For everyone Google fur Google. seal. <laughs> yeah, they are. They're quite cute. <laughs> Oh, classy lark pulling Ooh. up. We have one question left. It's still anyone's game. Yeah, seeing, anyone as how this, seeing as how the leaderboard hasn't gotten one right in like four <laughs> questions. If you're in the top five and you get it right, no one else does. You win. So quiz. Yeah. What is a group of jellyfish called? Is it a murder, a smack, a jam, or a crash? I personally want it to be a jam. So then it I'm really hoping it's jellies. a jam. Nothing else is nice here. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the jam thing just made I that that one made me laugh because like smack. smack. <laughs> yes, which is a question that we have had on cloud chats before because remember we used to do love doing the true or false oh, ones. Yeah. So do we have remember. done what a group of jellyfish is called. Bits and bites. Here we go. Third place is the joyful urchin with four Yay. out of ten. Oh wow, classy lark four out of ten. It was a Six. bloodbath today. Ooh, fast, fast iguana. iguana. <laughs> wow, Mason, you wrote a hard ten. quiz this week. I did. Well, I think it's the multiple choice. It's like <laughs> had these been true or false, it would have been a lot better. But these multiple choice are really set, like you know, blowing out the, the ratio here. Yeah. Wow. So fast iguana, go ahead and Mason. May good grief, words. <laughs> Mail Mason at digitalocean.com with your shipping address, including all the bits I need, you know, zip code, city, state, country, all of that. So email Mason at MasonEgger. No, that's my other email. You can email that one too, but it's better to email Mason at digitalocean.com. Um, because then I'll remember it. Because that other emails that don't email that one, that's like a graveyard. Like you, you may get your stickers <laughs> next year. Um yes. The only cloud chats I've ever aced without cheating. Well, that's good. Well, to... nice. Yeah, yeah, good. So that's what we have for that. And now, I guess if that's all we have, we'll move on to our last segment, which is what's at our mind. What's oh, on our I mind? Oh, I did want to. Okay, I got to scroll up to find this comment, but I did want to call out this comment from the beginning of the show. Irebox saying, "Hey, thanks for the Kubernetes and DigitalOcean course last week." So. Oh, sweet. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. I'm just looking at the doc here. Have any of us put what's on? No, none of us no. have. Mm -mm, definitely no, I, I know what's on my mind, but I guess we'll go ahead and move into the section where we just go around and talk about what's on our mind. Ooh, I like this music. Yes. And we're going to go ahead and start with Matt. Matt, what is on your mind? Well, uh, if you uh, happen to peruse the digitalocean.com website, you may have noticed that some pixels moved positions yesterday. <laughs> um, we launched a new homepage yesterday, which was pretty exciting. Um, we've also launched, I think, the Droplets product page, the Kubernetes product page, and the App Platform product page all have slightly new designs. Uh, it's part of like a brand refresh we're doing. Uh, if you like, I think if you're in the Bay Area as well, you may see some new adverts from us, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Should we, can, we, can we run the video? Oh, yes, we can run the video. Run the second. video. Because then you'll get so, an idea of the new brand. Yes, if you missed, er, missed it earlier, we have a new video. It can be hard to get your big idea started, to write the first lines of code for software that will change the world, to hire the team that will make your dream a reality. That's why we built a different cloud, one that's comprehensive without complexity, that gets you up and running in minutes and stays with you every step of the way. Because simpler tools lead to happier developers and happier developers get better results. Build with us, grow with us at DigitalOcean. I love it. Woo. So yeah, 
we, we, the name we, of the band, the name of the band in that video, it looks like it's smoked famine with an F, which I think is funny. <laughs> like smoked salmon, smoked the famine. I don't know. I was like, what? Oh, it's the band name. <laughs> that's that's weird, but okay. But yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Enjoy the new homepage, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah. More and more pages will start to like update um, as we slowly roll out the changes. Um, but I don't know, it's exciting. It's it's always nice to have like a slight refresh and it's I don't know, if you go and look at it, it's still very much DO. And I think that's really important. Um like we're not the brand hasn't changed something else. We're still DO. It's just slightly refreshed. Slightly I, I don't know, like, almost slightly happier. I feel like um, we should just pull it. this up and show it. Like Yeah, that makes oh, sense. I was I was leaving it as like a, a fun activity for people to do afterwards, but we can show it. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't know if I would qualify it as a fun activity. Yeah, but cloud cloud chat's it. homework. Go and look at the site. Ooh, look at those clouds. Yeah. It, I don't know. I'm So I'm kind of getting like Toy Story wallpaper themes from the clouds. Because <laughs> it's like that That was like the thing in there. But we have we're back to having a GIF on the front page. Ooh, I, had nice. to, I had to beg for this for two and a half years and I finally got my wish. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, but yeah, lots of cool stuff. Interactive calculator on how much money it would cost you. And yeah, it just, it looks really good. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, we have like these really nice little, like, I love the little ocean mm -hmm. stuff at the bottom. That, that makes me the happiest for some reason. I don't know why, but it does. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're, we're cool digital ocean and we're like finally really embracing, you know, the ocean vibes. <laughs> you said we redid the droplets page. Yes. Ooh. Oh. Pretty. I feel like we're at like an aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> we should stop doing that. We should like have yeah. little bubbles just randomly float up and stuff. That oh, would be really idea. nice. That would be that would be really nice. But yeah, there you go. That's what's on my cool. mind. That makes sense. You you did a lot of work on that. Well, I don't know. I I, I wasn't actually like weirdly. I was not involved in this at all. Uh, it was like the rest of our engineering team within marketing. Um, oh, okay, so your mean, like, friends were involved. <laughs> my friends were involved with it. Um, I was kind of on the sidelines fixing other bugs whilst they were working on it. Um, but yeah, it's been really cool to see it kind of come together in the last few weeks uh, as they've kind of built out the final pages. And it's live. That's great. <laughs> nice. Kim, what about you? Yeah, I guess the thing that's on my mind is I've been on uh, uh, some interview panels in the last couple of weeks. Um, and I always appreciate the perspective I get uh, when I'm interviewing someone for the company I work at. Just it gives me a nice opportunity to reflect on like what is what is it actually like to work here? What is the job that I do? How would I describe that to someone who doesn't know? And then um, I always enjoy. It. Honestly, I like meeting new people and hearing them uh, in in the interview, even though I know it can be really nerve wracking. So um, yeah, just. Uh, and then I think the best thing about interview panels is that I've learned that oftentimes, like, if you don't get the job, it has nothing to do with you. It's like a different candidate had this very specific thing or it was a timing issue or, or things like that. So that helps me as I uh, when I'm on the job market to remember, like, you just do your best and then you got to let it go because uh, there's often like all sorts of stuff that that leads to someone getting hired that you have no control over as someone who's interviewing. So that's what's on my mind, interviews. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really true. The amount, I've been on like three or four interview panels here. And if I had hired everyone who was amazing in their interview, we would have hired like 12 people. Yeah, we should just do that. I that's wish we nice. could. I ask, I ask every time <laughs> and I always get told no. Um, <laughs> But yeah, like the, it, it, I hundred percent agree with Kim. Like it's it's definitely opened my eyes, and it really. It's, I'm not gonna say it's like right time, right right moment, right place, but it really is. Like I've had I've had to pick between amazing candidates before. Yeah, <laughs> and I feel bad because I'm like I would I'd love to have you both or all of you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, cool. we've got a question for Matt from Twitch. Who is this mad IPv4? Why not IPv6? Because, uh, you know, IPv6 is, is great and all. Um, sure, we get we get more address space. Uh, but try memorizing a random IPv6 address. That's why I have not upgraded. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Just like the rest of the world. <laughs> Very true. A little salty there, but... <laughs> it's so true, though. <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll oh, we got some we got some comments about the video. So Ironbox says, love to see the DigitalOcean data center underwater the same way as Microsoft Ooh. did it a couple of years back. So that would be interesting. That's a lot wait, of money. I would I think we should do it differently if we did it though. All right. So when Microsoft did it, they just put it in like a massive steel tube under the sea. Oh. It was very pointless almost, you know. Like it, it was a steel tube, it wasn't really in the sea. Sure they were using it the sea to cool it. But <laughs> like, if you were in, you couldn't get inside it. But if you were inside it, you wouldn't know you're under the sea. Yeah. So I think if did... we did it, we should do a massive plexiglass box, <laughs> so you can like well, the... scuba dive around it and see the servers. Did people? Could you get into the steel tube? Like Ooh. they probably had... no. No, it, it was, was all com... autonomous. Yeah, completely Man. sealed off. Whoa. That is interesting. I I'll say did it was not was not paying attention when that happened. Oh, that was, was a was, cool experiment. It was a dual experiment, right? It was like a one: can we use the sea to cool a data center? Yeah, yes, yeah. you can. Turns out the sea is pretty cold and it's you know, chilly and big. <laughs> and, and two: can you run hardware in an isolated environment that will just keep going when the when that environment is like truly isolated? And mm. it turns out again, pretty much, yeah. And what they, the other thing they did is they pumped all of the oxygen out of the tube and replaced it with nitrogen. And hmm. not having oxygen in it actually slowed the decay of the machines. Whoa. Like, the, like, the, the, like by having a non, and also if you don't, don't have, you have no risk of fire because mm -hmm. you don't have oxygen. So like, it was a really cool thing, but like they were able to get like the, the hardware was down there for like two some odd years. And like it, it looked, and it had only like, according to like all of the benchmarking, it looked, it had like aged at half speed. Hmm. So amazing. I'm going to look it was that up really cool. done. Also, it was really cool, but it's just very difficult to maintain over a long time. Because, <laughs> you know, if you want to upgrade a server, you know, it's bring the massive steel tube up from the seabed. Well, that's the thing is when you own large data centers like that, you don't upgrade servers. Like True. Netflix lets their servers die. Like if, if, if a hard disk fails on a server, it would cost more money for them to go in to replace it than to just let the entire box come to a grinding halt and then just replace the box. So like when you have that level of scale, yeah. like it's actually better just to let the machines die. Hmm. So it's it's yeah, da data centers are fun. But I, know, I like I like the concept here. I think we should do like just a server in a plexiglass box in the sea. <laughs> I do like that. <laughs> and then Leandro says that DigitalOcean cap in the video seems kind of cool. It is not in the store though. It's okay. I, I don't have one either. Oh, I. I have one. <laughs> Wait, what? I got one in my like new you... employee package. Oh, I I feel cheated. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna that. go talk. I'm gonna go talk with people. I don't wear hats, but I mean like, I have every other piece of DigitalOcean swag. I want that one. Yeah, yeah, I have a lot of DigitalOcean swag. <laughs> no, I I I I get the point though that the store actually does not have a lot of stuff. Um, there's a lot of secret swag that like employees have or we have access to give to people that's not on mm -hmm. the store. And it, it would be nice to have more stuff on the store. So it's a good reminder. We should talk to some people. Yes, we <laughs> should, for Logan sure. Logan rubbing it in. I got a cap <laughs> too. <laughs> Sorry, friends. <laughs> go away, Logan. Oh, go. Mason made yeah. that comment. Go away, not me. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear about it, Logan. Oh, Logan was dude. one of the people behind our new brand refresh. So everyone yes. give him a round of applause. That is true. Applause. Logan did a tremendous amount of work for that. <laughs> yes. <sighs> yeah. Okay, what's on my mind? I don't even yeah. know. Py From now until the end of March, Pytexas is the only thing on my mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm you're one of the organizers. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm the conference chair. Well, no, Dio's always on my mind, but like, Py like outside of work, it's Pytexas. Like, I that's we got our we got our conference speaker list published last night um, with the schedule, so I'm excited about that. We're there. Um, the joke that we've been making now, like, so going back to an in-person conference is hard right now mm. like it's just like everyone's rusty the step it's like you know ticket sales aren't selling the way i want them to yet so i'm working on that but like it really feels like the jankiest alpha you've ever had <laughs> so internally we started referring to this year as mv pi texas mvp pi texas like this is our this is our we're getting it out the door we're shipping it we have like We've just been making that joke internally, and it killed me the first time I heard it. Um, <laughs> and I get—I guess that's just all the stress and just the like ah, coming. Well, from I saw trying the... to organize nine hundred cats. 
I saw the organizer of PyCon US, uh, they published a blog post about why they're doing it in person and like the precautions they're taking surrounding COVID. And um, I didn't I even see that. I think you're not alone <laughs> in uh, things not going the way you were expecting them to. <laughs> yeah, it's we're getting there and we're and at this at this point it's happening like mm -hmm. like if i have to have a pie texas for five people i'll do it now we have more tickets sold than that <laughs> but like i i've i have spent the last six eight months of my life working on this it's happening yeah. like we're gonna we're gonna do it <laughs> um uh, but for yeah those that are in the texas area where would where would they go if they were pytexas.org PyTexas.org has registration. We published our, ta our talk list and the schedule last night. We're going to be putting up t-shirts for sale soon. So if you've already bought a ticket, the t-shirts will be coming on sale soon. We just try supply chain issues are causing t-shirt issues. Yeah. So <laughs> that's been fun. Um, I feel like I got the short end of the stick on this one. But yeah, so PyTexas.org, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really I'm looking forward to it. We have a great speaker lineup. Like I'm super excited about some of the talks. Matt, I think I finally have found someone who like you know how like they ever see those talks or those those things where it's like, you know, I built an entire this to do this really small task, like something mm -hmm. like over engineered to be on. I literally have someone giving a talk about how they used Raspberry Pis and Apache Apache Kafka to monitor their their house plants so they could have event based plant watering. Oh, that's so cool! <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm if like, I yes, had the time I would totally do that. It's like event based wa plant watering. We have someone giving a talk on uh, Python chess, like using the, pro the oh, like cool. doing stuff with that. It's it's gonna be great. I'm really excited. I'm just exhausted and I will sleep for like a whole week when I'm done. <laughs> and the, uh, the, you're recording the talks, right? So even if you're not going, you can access them afterwards. Yes. Yes. We are in the midst of talking with our AV person. We'll have them recorded and put up on our YouTube channel for sure. Sweet. So yeah, pytexas.org. If you're interested in coming down and hanging out with me in Texas, we'll have barbecue. It's going to be delicious. <laughs> so <laughs> barbecue, and, barbecue and Mexican food. <laughs> No, Matt, not everyone waters their plants <laughs> with Kafka, okay? Yeah, with it like an event driven. <laughs> I could totally see that becoming like more common though. Like someone will build some decent consumer devices that you can just clip onto a plant pot and it will just do it for you. But we don't need Kafka. <laughs> like Well, it doesn't we do have to not... be Kafka, but you know. <laughs> I know, but Fourth still I watering. Actually, no, I have two Kafka talks. Out of 14 talks, there are two of them that have Kafka in them. I should have taken a stronger stance against that beforehand. <laughs> Only one Kafka talk. We just did the speaker guidance. Nothing Kafka this year. Sorry. No Kafka. No, we're not doing it. Um, go check out the list. It's going to be a lot of fun. Come come down. It'll It's going to be great. We're going to have a lot of... It's going to be just, you know... It's going to be a, the first in-person conference that I've been to since... February of 2020, and I am I am beyond excited for it because I am tired of being not at conferences with my community. So that's yeah. what's on my mind. Very exciting. Yes. So if that's everything that's on everyone's mind, ooh, wait, did it? Oh, it slow faded at the perfect time again. It's like wow, the music's, look the at music's us. <laughs> the music's walking us out. But so the right way. Yes. Yes. Not with the weird <laughs> audio issue. <laughs> So live streams, there's a special live stream today. Um, so I'll be on online all day. It's going to be great. How exciting. No, it's not. Um, it is, but it's not. So Kim live streams on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern. I am live streaming today the first time on Joe Nash's um, stream on coding, on coding badly. Um, we will be doing, we will be, yes. And it's going to be bad. Like I'm already I telling you. I should be on that stream. I'm so excited. <laughs> it's, it's, this is going to be like, I've like, I thought it was going to go one way and the first relay person. So we're, you we know, coding bat. the, what we're doing is this is with battle snake. So I'm going to pull mm -hmm. up, I guess we have to go back to like our, we should explain this. Yeah. We should explain everything. We're going too fast. So first off, DigitalOcean has partnered with Battlesnake. So if you're unaware of Battlesnake, Battlesnake is a exactly what it sounds like. You take a snake, you program it, you make it fight with other people, and you win prizes. So DigitalOcean is the cloud sponsor for the Spring League this year. Um, 
where is the spring league? Is it, where's the spring there we league? Go. Yeah. So we are the cloud sponsor this year. It's so cute. It's um, so also, cute. <laughs> um, Matt, do you have the Dio Sammy? Or do you yes, have the Sammy? If you yes. go to the leaderboard, I'm in there. Oh, Matt. Of course you are, Matt. Where Where's the leaderboard? Spring League. Drop the, the right, right, right leaderboard. Uh, if you search, just control F, Matt, will probably find me. There you are. So if you look here, there is a brand new Sammy Shark. Uh, <laughs> One that will be getting released today. So on co the Coding Badly stream, I will be doing what's called a relay stream, where every week someone is adding something to the snake and we're all building one together. So the first person, like, you know, it was going to be JavaScript. I was like, okay, I can, Joe can help me with that. The first person <laughs> came on and implemented some Go Wasm stuff. <laughs> oh, dear. So now Joe and I are both lost. Um, and what I'm going to try to do today is I'm going to try to get the deploy to DigitalOcean button working for app platform. And I'm oh, going to cool. get some Terraform written so you can deploy it to a droplet if you need a beefier server. That okay. I know I can do in my sleep. It's getting <laughs> ExpressJS running on app platform. I have no idea how to do that. So that it's going to be bad. Simple. Okay, uh, be I sure hope so. <laughs> yeah. So if you're in the Spring League, go check it out. Um, there's, is, it's is, just Is the badly coded snake in the leaderboard? I don't think it could be. Is it not working yet? <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. We're going to find this out together. So I'm doing that one today at... Let me stop sharing my screen and find my calendar. Uh, that one starts, I guess, at 1 o'clock Central Standard. And it's going to go till 2.30. I don't think we'll take that long. Um, and then after that, my normal weekly stream, I'll be starting at 3 o'clock Central. I have no idea what I'm doing for that. So that'll be fun, and I just, it's just, I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Streaming. So lots of streams this week. All of them are going to be on Twitch, so check it out. And then next week, Kim, you have a tech talk. Is it next week? Mm -hmm. It is next week. Kim, you have a mm -hmm. tech talk. What's that going to be about? Yeah, on Wednesday, I'm giving a tech talk on how to secure your Kubernetes ingress with Nginx and certificates from Let's Encrypt. So uh, that's your, if you're interested in that, like, please join me. It's more of an intermediate kubernetes talk um but uh yeah it's my first tech talk of the year well i guess it's the first tech talk by myself that i'm giving this year um so i'm in that phase of making the talk where i'm like why did i sign up to give this talk <laughs> <laughs> so once i get out of that phase i'll be pretty happy i'm sure but yeah please join me i would love to see you all there yes and the, the, you can go to do.co slash tech talks for that you can also go to do.co slash battlesnake. Oh. Where is that, you, that is if you want to try out DigitalOcean and you want to do some Battlesnake stuff, we have a really cool page for it. Um, that's a fun oh. page too. And then we have one more question in the chat. Basically, webhooks versus triggers. You know, writing a project uh, involves a trigger, I guess, function in which devs can write code. And no, and I know it's a security risk. Should I work on webhooks? Then webhooks or triggers? Um, I like webhooks. Webhooks, yeah, it works you pretty You can make well. them really secure. You can control exactly what data is being sent. Yeah, webhooks yeah. are a good way to go about it. Cool. So that leaves us nothing but the joke of the day. Unless Ooh. anyone has anything else. No, just play Battlesnake. It's fun. Play Battlesnake. Yeah, it's fun. And if you come and watch the Joe stream today, we will be giving out the code so you can get the custom Sammy Battlesnake so you can show your DigitalOcean love while you're playing. Oh, we could just have a leaderboard <laughs> full of Sammies. It would be amazing. I would love it. <laughs> so, okay. Are we ready for our joke? Ready. Always. What sound does a nut make when it sneezes? Cashew. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. That is all the time we have left for today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for Cloud Chats. We'll be back at the same time next week. See you then.